What is going on? Top of the morning to you. Brisk morning here in Florida. I'm back at Jim Kovaleski's house. Gonna get you guys a little follow-up video. Did notice the greenhouse isn't done yet, but everything else is looking stellar. Um, kind of an overcast morning here. It's gotten a lot cooler since I've been here. And I'm sure by this point, you guys have already seen the Kickstarter video to hopefully help save Jim's mom's house. So save Freedom Farms. Let's go find Jim. started kicking. I got a, I'm probably three days behind on the seedlings, getting them out. Um, but we'll be harvesting those in 10 days. So we're pretty much finishing up this bit. <coughs> so hopefully I'll get another half of this in. Oh, I'm excited about that. What is that? What do you think? Uh, I don't know, not asparagus. That's it is. It is? That's what I thought at first, but I thought it was off. Whoa. Yeah, I brought back a bunch of seeds from when I was there for Christmas. Because okay. they were just sitting in the red berries, and I put them. I'm going to try to grow them out and take them up there as really small um, crowns. And I might be able to get a year jump on it. Because they're free, pretty much. Mm. So. The mushrooms are back, huh? Oh, yeah. Strawberries definitely haven't No winter with the strawberry seaweed combo, Jim? <laughs> no, they're just not doing anything like they do in Maine. It's just, I mean, but I mean, I don't know the plant, so maybe this is the time of the year they start to kick when the days start getting longer. I don't know. Um, plant City, well, I mean, the Strawberry Fest ain't till what, February, right? You got some time. So maybe that's when they thrive. Uh, Jim, we had a lot of people ask if you rinse the seaweed out before you put it down. No, I mean, I picked it up after a big rain, but you know, the same thing, I'm watering with salt water, so I see salt as a benefit. Um, you know, I don't see any problem with using fresh seaweed right out of the ocean. But that's me. I mean, other people will worry about it, so. So little issues with the salad mix, but other than Yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, I didn't, you know, I remember I was using it for a while for the whole garden back 15, uh, 12 years ago. Um, but that little pieces get in the greens mix. And, you know, I kept it out of my most garden area, but it's blowing in, like, from that edge. Mm -hmm. And I was washing that lettuce, and there was this little stringy, you know, all these little things in there. But it's a really good mulch. It yeah. lasts forever. You had a pest issue originally with the strawberries when the leaves were touching the mulch, right? It wasn't the leaves, it's the berries, and I still had them. I thought it would be better. Anyway, I'll find one where they eat, they eat the half of the berry. Because it's laying on the ground. You think you got it really good, and... <clears throat> yeah, see? That was on the ground. Ooh, I see a mill. Everybody's got to eat. <laughs> but it might be not be strawberries with this woody mulch. Uh, yeah, and the high tunnel or whatever, the caterpillar tunnel ain't ready yet because I'm trying to get that cold season crop out of there. But we'll probably put the plastic on tomorrow, no, Tuesday, so Wednesday if everything goes good. Um, and then I'll walk you in the porch because we've got a bunch of plants that are ready to go in there already because I started those like four weeks ago. Oh, and stand by with some tomatoes? Tomatoes, um, cucumbers mainly just to get those in and then we've got another round just popping out of the minis which will also go in the greenhouse to grow up in the four inch blocks that'll go out here you know hopefully mid to late february and then this is all going to be warm season crops wow. i'm kind of excited because you know normally i spend all of april getting it you know mulch sweet potato black eyed peed and then i leave but this year i'll be able to have market right up until i leave may 1st and then Tanner will be able to go on May and June. Take a so time. there'll be a lot of more cash flow out of here. Assuming the warm season crops do well. <laughs> yeah. That's always farming. Jim, are you going to cut back these 15-foot papayas over here again? I probably am. Um, yeah, they're already too big. That's the ones I missed. And that one over there. Yeah. But the ones I did in the back, see them? They're already coming back up, yeah. Yeah, so they're still, they're harvestable anyway. What is that tree that got cut way back? Is that a mango? That's that mango that yeah. was a seedling that never had fruit. Never did much, okay. Yeah. So overall, I'm really pleased right now. I mean, it, that, you know, cold, cold around Christmas definitely set us back. It stopped everything and burnt a lot of stuff, but the last frost was just like the traditional. You know, we had a heavy frost. All the seedlings were totally coated with white. Thawed out, I was harvesting lettuce two hours later. Wow. You know, that's what I'm used to. That, cold at Christmas was so different. Um, I've ne I wasn't here to see it, but the fact that it didn't kill the grass. 
you know, so there was no real wet frost, you know how that happens? Yeah. So I think it was just such a dry, um, cold and windy that it just dry, you know, desiccated things. So I think that's why you guys have so much problems up there, and especially if you had water then. Um, water didn't help. No, and I have always said that, you know, Josh always claimed that, you know, if you did it right, you could, and the strawberry growers do it, but they, they're tuned into it. You know, they, they can cover down. their whole field. You know, if you've got any kind of zone system, how are you going to do it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, they're running big diesel gas pumps and Yeah, they and do the whole else. field, yeah. So, there's a few crops that have been, yeah, pretty impressive. You know, the mustards are just thriving. I love that Osaka. It's um, beautiful. It's purple, yeah. And that's the one that tastes just like wasabi. And that's, it's a monster, but really it looks like a bok choy. I sell it as a bok choy. It's called Lady Miraski. Beautiful. Those colors. Yeah. Well, I mean, right now everything's so vibrant. Got that <laughs> golden hour this morning. Yeah. So you're going to be feeding just as many families this year? More? What are you More. doing to kick up production a little bit? More families? More. You know, the CSA has just taken off. Um, you know, we'd average probably 30 or 35 a week last year, and this year we're probably going 50 to 55, maybe even 60 by the time this is over. So that's a lot more CSAs, but it cuts into the Tuesday market a little. But like yesterday, we took a bunch of stuff to rights, and we still did 500 bucks there, even though we just did the CSA on Friday with, I guess, was that 22? So. Wow. All right, we got a new broccoli. Well, you know, I've always Chinese liked broccoli. the Chinese broccoli, and you know, Suho was the other smaller leaf one. And this looks a similar to Suho, but it's like double the size on the stem. It's called Melody. So I definitely I went ahead and seeded out another 60 of these because I love them, and they're quick. They're probably another 10 days before Happy Rich. So I've been harvesting off these for like a week and a half, two weeks. I just started on Happy Rich. So no big heads, just a bunch of side shoots? Yeah, it's side shoots and side shoots and side shoots. But look at the si the small... It's huge. Well, it's really a small footprint compared to... Look at the Arcadia right next to it. Oh, you're right. Look how much I mean, wider that is. Yeah, I mean, that's taking up a lot of space. There's and, the side by side. There's a difference in the green, too. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's definitely different. You can see them. You know, and those... The thing about that is I'll get side shoots off it. So I still don't mind using that space because I'll get multi... I'll get... You know, probably that head will probably double and then I'll get that much in side shoots and maybe even more um so i'm excited about that and then you know i did more cauliflower this year it's still kind of a waste in my opinion because it's one cut and you're done um but with this transition to warm season stuff we'll be able to move right away into you know watermelons cucumbers get some of that stuff out here in you know six weeks yeah this is still a little of a disappointment um because I wanted to get the early crops in here and they didn't perform as much as I'd hoped. But we still got a lot of crop out of it. Um, you know, we already got potatoes out of where the arugula is and then got three cuts of arugula. So I'm really happy about that one. Um, pill bugs ate a lot of stuff early. They're not now. Um, but this is all carrots. These are some of the tomatoes I planted way when I got here. These made it to that cold? Yeah, as well. much as they could. But, you know, they just don't thrive here in the the fall. The spring tomatoes are, I think, the way to go. But we've been harvesting out of this for four weeks. These are really seeded densely with that, um, you know, four row seeder I do. Just the hugger Yeah, and you pull one out and then they just get big. You pull, <laughs> it's just amazing. Snow apples. Yeah. And then the chard's been good. But I'm having to rob it a little harder because I'm always, you know, I'm having to fill 50 CSAs a week, so. Try to come up with 50 bunches of chard, so, oh well. But, you know, now it's all gonna kick in with the second and third planting, so. Been I mean, hitting the garden hard, huh? Yeah. You know, that's that whole, you know, I'm really, everybody says my efficiency is really warped, but, you know, I've got perpetual lettuce. And everybody goes, what the hell's perpetual lettuce? But, if you think about it, those lettuce leaves, you know, that lettuce plant will put on three or four bigger leaves every day. So if you go harvest them, you have, I mean, you're getting that every two days. And every two days, I've been harvesting those lettuces over on the far side for eight weeks. Wow. You know, and now that I finally got that one kicking in and this one coming, I'm starting to take whole heads again, but. Yeah, I recognize that pitchfork. Oh yeah, it's been around. It's that little video I just saw. <laughs> it's been around. Right. Oh, that one, yeah. yeah. That one. Yeah. Wish I could link it. <laughs> so these are all, just went in two days ago. 
They're a little bigger than I'd like, but I'd rather have them on the big side than the small side. Have you already harvested this once, or this is the first planting in this bed? First planting in this bed. Wow. You know, normally that's how it is, and then I, the next planting should be over there, and I think I'm still going to do that. Originally, I planned to put the warm season out here, but what I'm seeing is that's what I'm remembering, too, about being on this land for this many years. That's shady as we get hot in March and April. So I want them cool season ones over here. I want the hot season ones out in the full sun there. So that's probably gonna be all the tomatoes and eggplants and peppers. I mean, we really cranked it up. We got like, I don't know, 10 different kinds of peppers and uh, some eggplants, uh, lots of different tomatoes. So we'll see how it goes. I see we still have by the house. Yeah. That's and the last spot. Pretty much, and that's, we'll take some of the whatever's out on the wall still. Okay. This is something I did last year that I was really impressed with. <clears throat> that's something, you know, the spinach doesn't perform well in the early winter. As the winter got longer, suddenly they're doing better. But I did this last year, so put the spinach. They're mostly a prostate plant or a prostrate plant. So they go out and then you put the leeks in between. And so these leeks were about that tall. So you put a, a rod down and make a like 12 inch deep hole and drop the whole leek down. So then you'll have a blanched white leek that big in about eight weeks. Wow. And it worked really good last year. I did it right there. Two days old. These are some big starts. Yeah. I mean, they really, you know, that makes it so I'll be harvesting really quickly. But I'm Here's all the uh, tools for the job. Yeah. Okay, high tech. Yeah, that high tech butter knife. Got a high tech knife. butter knife. Got one of them. I don't know where my other stuff is, but it's around. <laughs> yeah, so this is kale that will just start getting harvested. This is second planting. So now I'll be able to, you know, get rights what they want because they would take, you know, 20 bunches a week and I haven't been able to get it. As much kale as you can get them, huh? Wow. Yeah. And the dandelion is the one that I'm killing it with. I bet they'd sell 25 bunches. Who's this? Right. Oh, right. Okay. So, I mean, I used to only plant like 20, you know, there they are. But now I can go around that like a, every day and, you know, those six plants will give me two bunches. And of I'm which? Still, of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> the dandelion green. You know, that's the red stem. It's not true dandelion. It's a chicory, but I mean, it's the same, you know, bitter that everybody wants. And then cilantro too. I, you know, last year I realized how good that did for me in the winter. Cause I guess I used to plant it too late. So it'd always be bolting, but it doesn't bolt for, you know, another three or four weeks. So I'm getting, you know, a lot off them too. Cilantro looks Yeah, great. you definitely learn crops. And then the green garlic is such a good one. You can't grow enough of that. Um, and I'm pretty much getting a buck a piece for those now. The green garlic? Yeah. Really? Well, I'm selling them, bunching them when they're big, two to a bunch for two bucks. Your weeds growing over here, huh? Nasturtiums yeah, taking over. Yeah, that's the only place I'm really letting. They didn't, you know, that's the microclimate of the house. They didn't take it very bad. The mm. ones out by the wall took it pretty bad. Jim, when the camera on earlier, you were getting ready to show me a different cauliflower that was doing a little better. Oh, it's a little bigger, yeah. A little bigger, yeah. But don't touch this. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, there's shallots here that I forgot all about. I see them down there. So they had, were sitting in a, uh, you know, basket, and I said, hell. Plant them out, so they could do good for me. I might try that next year here if they do. That's oh. a bigger cauliflower. That's Still dead. not as big as that 10 pounder. Whoa. Last year I had a 10 pounder. You had a 10 pound collie? Whoa. Yeah, well, 9.85. 9.85, But okay. these are heading up too, so that'll be good in the CSA probably next week, the early Jersey Wakefield. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's just starting to rock pretty good. Getting into the peak of season, oh, huh? Oh, let's go in and look at the tomatoes. Oh, the front porch? Yeah. Oh, I see them from here, Jim. What do you got them in the big blocks? Yeah. You know, I started doing that in Maine and I'm loving it. You can truly see the air proof. Yeah, we don't know if you'll be able to see them, but see how they're just going down the outside? Yeah, here too. And you'd think they'd be more fragile, but you know, they're just going on and that's just starting. So I. You know, we'll leave some of these like this in the greenhouse and they'll root down. There's cukes already starting to say, there's cucumbers? Whoa! So, and you know, this is that little sun porch. Not so it's still warm in here. Yeah. Basils? 
Basil and Tulsi. We got Tulsi. the holy basil and then the regular basil. And then we'll do a whole nother round of those. Same thing over here? Uh, Morning. Morning! You know that? Another one you know that is? No, you? Nope, no idea. Uh, it looks to be a Yeah, beautiful. so that's some stuff, and then this is all the hot weather stuff again. The tomatoes and all that kind of stuff. And all the same stuff. The inner plantings are still doing really well. Um, cause I, <coughs> you know, the kohlrabi, they size up in between, right? So that's double in my space. I wouldn't have to give the whole thing a kohlrabi row. And then all this broccoli was interplanted with snow apples that got harvested a couple weeks ago. So again, that, when the sunlight lost, when the broccoli got big, the snow apples were out. Um, and I'm also plant, interplanting with baby bok choy. And that's working good. Wow. So there's, you know, a lot of interplay there. You can see a few of the snow apples still. And then that's a Chinese broccoli I don't like at all. See how small that is compared to the other one? This little guy over here? Yeah, that was a new one I tried. I mean, they're all right, but that's more like Suho. Whereas that's Happy Rich. Look at them plants. And I just got the first cut, so they're going to have, you know, 16 inch long stems. Wow. So it's like asparagus. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah, these are sizing up good because I went through and took the big ones and they just coming on good. They're so pretty, I love that one. That one's called the Azure Star. But you're still looking a little of the burn from the, the that cold? was the cold burn. Is that what yeah. that is, really? Cauliflower took it probably the worst. No protection, no water. No. I went to Maine, I said. Just a lot warmer over here. It was. Yeah. I mean, there's moringa that didn't even take a hit. Yeah, that's not. Right. Um, that's not. Yeah, that's not cold. Mine's gone. I bet. Go. Armadillo has been out. That's pretty much my only critter. Look at that rich soil. Yeah. He's just digging for. He worms. knows what's going on. There's good worms in there. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much the only critter problem I have. Wow. Dang, Jim, garden is looking awesome. I wanted to bring something up. We had a comment in a couple videos back. Somebody said that, I don't know, they work at a prison? Did you see it Yeah. Too? Okay. Uh, there was some comment, yeah. So Jim, your videos are now being played inside a correctional institute or a prison as part of the ag program. Like that is the curriculum. I wonder if they're getting the mulch. Uh, let's hope so. Let's hope so. But Maybe they're I mean, mowing with a size. Talk knows? about making waves. This is awesome. It is, it is. Things keep rippling out. And by this point, I'm taking probably everybody's seen the Kickstarter. Probably, yeah, by the time you get this out. Um, yeah, that's just going to start. So so we're trying to raise money to buy mom's house from my brother's so that I can pass it on to Tanner. Um, so if you've been inspired or other people have been inspired that you know and got a little extra cash, kick it in and we'll see if we can make that happen. Save mom's house from turning into a grass hole? Right, and I it would. It would be some pretty damn nice St. Augustine. No. You tell me the grass would grow good over there, huh? Oh man, that's not what we want. We've been no. spending too long building soil. Yeah, I mean that was, I mean, yeah, it just needs to stay in farm. So I'm kind of, I'm positive it could happen. It's a lot of money, but um, you know, it's a different world these days. And thanks to you, I've got a lot of exposure and let's hope it works. Exciting stuff, Jim. You yeah, it really is. It's time to give back. Yeah, it's time for me to age out too. It's kind of fun. So it's just a little less pressure and it's a little more, ah, let's see what happens because you know, I'm passing it on and let's see what, you know, there's not that pressure to perform, perform, perform. So I'm having more fun. It seems like when you take that pressure off, you even are able to see deeper and take chances that seem to pay off really well. Um, yeah. Well, it sounds like in a couple of years, I'm really going to have to make that trip to Maine every year if I want to see you. Yeah, we'll dial it up up there too, though. You know, okay. like I got the asparagus going, um, so I'm trying to, so that would be the first crop up there. And then I've been really doing great on the strawberries, so ramp that up a little. So that's, you know, May and early June, and normally I don't have any crop until then. You know, and the greenhouses are allow us to do other things um, early, so then we have, you know, tomatoes six weeks earlier than normal, and then, you know, I want to do some more raspberries because they're a really good one. Berries are amazing. Um, Easy people to grow love too. them. Yeah. yeah, people love them. I'm kind of excited about what Tanner's doing in the backyard. Want to go through the there? Let's sure. Go What's new? <laughs> And then Christmas down there is just rocking. Already has fruit? Yeah. Okay. And it seems like it had a lot set without seed. You know, them thin ones? Nice. Yeah. The seedless fruits? Yeah. And then that's budding already. Oh, yeah. 
World's best or tied? Yeah, world's best. World's best in the end. Tied, tied dwarf. dwarf. Okay. There. Don't look too dwarf to me. No. <laughs> it's a mid-sized dwarf. But I'm curious to see if we'll have enough to sell. <clears throat> All right. So bananas already came back from the frost. Yep. And then. That pomegranate we were really worried about. Look it's at how much pushing all the new growth. Yeah, yeah. It's looking pretty good. It's liking all this. Persimmon still sleeping. Yeah. Lots of composting action going on He's over a here. Drop and dropper. All right. Like that old thing. And then new paint jobs there. looking good over here, Jim. Looking fresh. Yeah. Oh. Got a new sandbox. Okay. Yeah, the kids need that. Got to do it for the kids. And the tanner's been planting some stuff. This is a really good soil. We shaved off the front beds and the edges. Yeah. So all the way out to here is good soil. Let's see what happens. We had a couple of people ask in the last video, what is a jang? It's a specialty cedar. Um, you know, it's a precision cedar. It's like a five or six hundred dollar tool. Um, it just does thing a lot faster than my little pegboard. Yeah, speeds it up a little. Yeah. Oh, look at Tanner doing some interplanting. He had some extra um, leeks or um, leeks, yeah, yeah leeks. around there as a. Maybe forming a guild for an avocado. Nice. Black yeah. soldier fly still pumping with the cold weather? I haven't looked lately. I know he's pumping eggs out. I can't believe how many eggs he is. You guys can't eat them all? Oh yeah, there's some crawling up. Still going? Crawling up the edge down there. Oh See yeah. It? Oh, coming up the ramp? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so they could, they could have some in the bucket. Could. First breakfast. No, I didn't even miss the empty day. I think he does it daily because they've been okay. they've been crawling out. If they stay in there too long. Oh, they get out of the bucket. Yeah. Oh wow. So. <laughs> and then I don't know if this is a good place, but Annie gave me some muratons. Hmm. So that's that chayote that comes from uh, New Orleans. One? It's a special one that's indigenous to New Orleans called a muraton or really? muraton. Yeah. If you look it up, it's M E R or something like that. <clears throat> it's supposed to be special. We'll see. She said it like shade, so we put it here. We'll see. Huh. What about the gorilla planting? You guys made some, uh, some yeah, we made progress a little over room. there. Yeah, I think that's really going to help because that's a tiny mulberry out there that I got cuttings from that huh. one in the alley. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, what's going on with all the free food around here? Free food? Where? <laughs> you got a whole box full right oh, here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Freedom Farm. <laughs> It's a nice little paint job. When you looked at it from this side, I thought it said free food, but you got to come around it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess he has to keep the size. He likes that big size. But, oh, yeah. But yeah, this whole area is going to be, you know, extra parking and also we'll get some food for us stuff in here. So so your your van's there. never been in there. That's a first. No, I can pull the truck in there. Got some more space. Yeah. Another cool. 5,000 square foot back here, Jim. Well, this was deeded to me now, so this alley is mine now. Technically, wow. yep. you can move your fence out. I could, I'd put, I could put a gate there. That's what I'm thinking. And then me and Steve could use the gate. Okay, so you would shut it off. Yeah. Right. And then that way we'd nobody know what's going on back there. That would be nice. Wow. It's getting a little chilly. It is. It's got, as I said, it's gotten colder since I got here. Definitely. It wasn't so bad when I left. For a main man, you know it's getting cold. Yeah, well, I need a jacket they, here, Jim. They left yesterday and they flew into a eight, eight inch snowstorm. Wow. They had a good visit. Wow. Yeah. All right, Jim, so it's Monday. Tomorrow's your market. What do you got over here? What have you bagged up so far? Well, I've just been bagging greens mix. So I'm still doing, even with the walk in, I just like to do things in the morning. So this is just a lettuce mix. I'll end up with like 30 bags out of this. Um, and then, you know, tomorrow will be carrots, radishes. Uh, probably some snow apples again, Chinese broccoli, um, kohlrabi, you know, a good variety of stuff. Nice. Um, so that's Tuesday is the one when I got a, so we got 20 CSA shares, so I got to pick 20 of everything and then put that in the walk-in and then get enough to do Tasty Tuesday so we have something. Lucky Nick is showing up because, I mean, there's nothing there. I mean, we wiped out. Yeah, I mean, we've only got like a quarter of what I normally have just because the CSA is a wiping us out. But, I mean, I'm not going to complain about, I mean, it's such an easy thing. Every time they show up, it's 25 bucks, wow. you know? So, yeah, it's a good thing. And I still like the modified one where they can opt in or out because if they're out of town or they can't do it. I mean, what people, is that, Fridays or is that all around? All of them. All of them are optimal. Yeah, so okay. you got it, but it's a little more managing because you got to text them every week to find out if they're in or out. Mm -hmm. But so I think the Tarpon one, there's like 75 names. Wow. 
and you don't have to handle the texting. No, I still got Peter, and then Tanner took over the texting for this one. We, I, I had run in a Facebook group, and some were text, some were Facebook, and he just said, we just gotta have text. And I guess there's some app that'll send them out singly, hmm. so it's not a group text, so everybody ain't connected. Because the, the first one he sent out, everybody got pissed off. Oh, they got my number, oh, geez, you know. <laughs> but we worked that out pretty quickly. All right, so now he's using a high-tech uh, app for yep. texting CSA clients, I yeah. like it. Yeah, I guess, yeah, he's bringing more tech savvy into this operation a little. Yeah. Well, good, because I'm going videos. to Maine where there's no text. Yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. Bringing some life back to it, you know. It's all good. All good. All right, Jim, couple weeks, follow up. Yeah, we'll have the greenhouse up. Oh, it'll be done. It will. It'll right. probably be up this week. I want to get it out. I guess we've got cold coming on Saturday. Freeze Four, again? 43 here. Oh, so freeze looking, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Frost. We're covering plants again this week. Don't count on it being over until mid-February. Oh. I told you that when you moved up there, didn't I? <laughs> you, did, you did. Okay. Costa Rica is sounding better and better, I won't lie. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We out. All right, this place is rocking. Jim's got it growing on this year. Everything is looking awesome out here. Hope you guys enjoyed the follow-up. Hope you guys enjoyed the knowledge. Jim has been dropping bombs on us for years here. Thought it was pretty awesome to hear that story about the, um, the prison using all of Jim's content as part of their ag curriculum. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the Kickstarter and the link down below in the comments if you didn't see the other video. Most importantly, guys, it's 2023. Get out there, start a garden, pound some dirt.